We got work to do. Welcome to How to Hell, a Supernatural podcast. I'm Kristen. And I'm Christine. And this week we're discussing Season 6, Episode 11, Appointment in Samara. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that I loved this episode. Oh, I'm I so loved glad. it. Well, and we get Tessa back. We get Death back. Which I think was like one of your favorite moments I so was far. Say, you Supernatural. know how much I love Death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Um, yeah, I, it was so great seeing him back and and, and Tessa and getting that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh God, I want to say Death Eater. It's not Death Eater. That that Reaper. Oh, the Reaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole storyline yeah. back in, and I was unusually uh happy with the rest of the storyline too like everything that happened with dina and sam Mm -hmm. worked for me so um it was just good it was just all around a good episode for me same yeah i i really love this episode um to those of you who don't remember what this episode is about it's the one where dean goes to death to make a deal to get sam's soul back but Sam has other plans. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, Sam goes real dark um, in yeah. this episode. And it's so interesting because it's kind of like, I realize it's kind of what Dean has been afraid of this whole time because he doesn't have a soul. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our normal Sam would never have done that, no matter the cost. Um, yeah, no, he would always choose blood um or family over over his own life i mean that's that's who sam is totally but he didn't go there um and we just saw the scary sam the the real soulless sam who doesn't have any empathy or feelings for others and uh is just looking out for what he wants essentially that's right Mm -hmm. um it's funny because in the Wikipedia or the Supernatural Wiki, um, they refer to this t- Sam as Robo Sam, like <laughs> Robocop, but Robo Sam. And so I was so confused because I was like, uh, in the description, it said the um, monster of the week, quote unquote, was Robo Sam. And I was like, wait, I don't remember like some sort of robot version <laughs> of Sam, you know? That's what I would think too. Or like Sam, like Ted and Bill and Ted, you know, like yeah. um, just an evil robot version. That would be insane. Um, well, in the title of the episode, Appointment in Samara, refers to a um, a story by Somerset Maugham, um, which is a, an old Middle Eastern story. Um, I'm sorry, it's based on an old Middle Eastern story, which is about... Uh, uh, it has a it has an interesting um description but i guess the gist of it is the speaker is death in the story and he talks about meeting this merchant who's like really nervous um about meeting him and the merchant is like oh well i don't want to you know i don't want i don't want to be around death so i'm going to go down to samara to get away from death and then death tells like the merchant's um master or whatever like oh i was actually really surprised to see this merchant there because i had an appointment with him in samara so it's just like this idea that you can't escape death uh it's it's always destiny that you're gonna get you're gonna find him in the right places and you know you you just can't run away from him and so that's definitely very similar to the story we see here that's so cool Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um I mean not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's here. Little... Um 
Yeah, but just as far as that being a really interesting story uh, and having that kind of moral to it, um, mm-hmm. and that's that's a good connection. I didn't know what appointment in Samara what was referring to, so that's a, a cool connection. No, me neither. Um, very cool connection. It's it's also uh, the episode concept is very Bruce Almighty um, or Evan <laughs> Almighty, a, l- a little bit of those as well. Um, and, and I guess the only other connection with that is I'm forgetting there's another one. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm forgetting. Yes. There's another one just like that. Well, and of course they make like Bill and Ted references and that sort of thing, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun concept for sure. We get a lot of interesting information about how death works just period. Yep. You know, that was a really cool way to show us and get that mm-hmm. insight. Um, so the episode was actually written by Sarah Gamble and Robert Singer, who are, I mean, just a- amazing superstars. Uh, and it was directed by Mike Roll, who we have seen direct a lot of episodes in Supernatural. Um, uh, I mean, none of them particularly have been our favorites per se but i mean he he's definitely done i think the best one or the our most favorite one that he's done was the monster at the end of this book which is pretty high up on our oh, list yeah. okay um but yeah he's he's done a few others and he has about three more that he's going to do for supernatural um in total into cool. season 6 and season 7 so okay it's a pretty good team behind this episode um and yeah, and there was no music. And other than the episode title and, and that description, I really don't have anything else. Um, so I am going to go ahead and get into it because, yeah, I mean, well, the ending it especially. What a crazy ending. Um, yeah, also Kristen can't find her charger and her computer might die. <laughs> so Look. If we're gonna if we're gonna be totally real about like why we're speeding through things <laughs> and a little no, no, peek no, behind the curtain, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, this baby is at eighty one percent now. Jesus, it's really just dropping. Yeah. I, I better close things. <laughs> What's open right now? Yeah, to conserve some battery energy. Look, I just want to um, be honest about it. You know what I mean? But, please, because but at some point, both, yeah. I'm just gonna cut off. <laughs> I'm just going to disappear. Yeah. No, I think we both uh, definitely want to do this episode justice. But um, yeah, by by can't find Charger, I mean that it might have gone with her dad to another state. So yeah, we're, it not, might be we're not California, getting it back so. soon. We're just, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Under um, a bit of crazy circumstances. Yeah. Um, okay. So episode recap happens dean apparently um got help from death to get his to get death's ring in order to stop the apocalypse which was a really amazing moment uh in season five dean's uh gotten help from tessa also a reaper um before and um and i forgot what the what all that was about i know adam might have been involved um but it was sometime, yeah, it was sometime in season five, season four. Um, and then, of course, Sam's soul is stuck in the cage with Lucifer, and we're trying to find a way to get it out. So this episode starts pretty awesome because we don't know what the hell is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, we've just finished the last episode where there was just a lot of shit that went down. Um uh, cage t was insane we like crowley ended up dying and uh they ended up teaming up with meg and and all basically in order to get you know to team up against crowley and to get sam's soul back and it was just um a huge mess in the end yeah that's a good way to put it Hmm. yeah but It seems that Dean has a different tactic, a different plan, because he pulls up outside an Asian butcher shop. He double checks the address he's got written down on a note before going in where the butcher points him to a door in the back. 
So he goes through this set of stairs and Dean meets Dr. Robert, who is uh, played by Dr. Oh, no, not a doctor who's played by Robert England, um, famously known to play Freddy Krueger in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. I liked him. He was a good actor. Yes. Yeah. Such a really great cameo from Robert England um, in this moment, in this scene. And um, so he seems to be this like former doctor who's like really sketchy, apparently lost his medical license um, because he was doing this sketchy stuff. And he's now doing like black market procedures um, in this building, along with Eva, his very goth or more, maybe more punk assistant. <laughs> it's just not at all like wearing you know, nurse garb or no, like it just not even pretending. It's whole, no, it's just a <laughs> hole in the wall, like medical practice, essentially. Yeah, it's, it's pretty insane. like um, black markety, shady, mm -hmm. germy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're not really brought into what's about to happen. Um, Dean hands over some paperwork that might be some waivers. Um, and he asks the doctor to send um, a piece of mail that he has addressed to Benjamin in case he doesn't make it through. So we're just like, okay, something is about to go down. What do you think was in the envelope for Ben? Oh, that's a great question. Um, a letter? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think a letter and probably just, you know, telling him how much he loves him and and all of that. I mean, that's that's got to be tough because, of course, he has not been able to see Ben. Yeah. Um, at all. And, and and or Lisa. So I'm surprised that we just saw the the one letter to Ben. Yeah. And not anything to Lisa. That makes me so sad. <laughs> I know. Yeah, because. Um, he obviously just has like unfinished business or things left to say to Ben. And I, mm -hmm. I guess it makes sense, you know, that he feels really bad about him because he shoved him and then left. And like, that's how they left off. You know, he knows he's been acting weird and I don't know, just mm -hmm. thinking about him loving that kid just really, you know, gets me. Yeah. And just to think that it was only 11 episodes ago at the start of the season where, Dean was We're totally happy. Together. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe not totally happy without Sam, but yeah, just living a normal life at least. Right. Um, anyway, just wondering. Food for thought, everybody. Mm -hmm. So Dean lays down on the table and he gets an IV in his arm and Dr. Robert shoots him up with something and tells him that he's got three minutes. So. We then hear him flatline and then see that Dean is now dead. And we see like ghostly Dean um, appear behind the table and just like look down at his dead body. And then, you know, just he's really chill. So mm -hmm. we know that he, this was what he was expecting. And he goes downstairs um, recites some Latin and, you know, just with a pop, Tessa appears. Um, Dean asks her to call her boss, but she refuses, but death shows up anyway, as if waiting for Dean. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> yes. And we get the credits here, but, um, after the credits, uh, we see that death well, death says that Dean has something of death's, right? The, the ring. Um, apparently he had never given it back, which is really rude of Dean. Yeah. And I'm surprised that, like, he didn't come after it or anything like that. Me too. Death is super cool. I don't know what everybody's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> if I were death, I would have already come for him to try to get the ring back. And he's, like, basically doing him all these favors in this episode. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised Dean didn't do that already. Yeah, I'm I'm really surprised that Death hasn't just like fucking killed Dean or like broken down the door. Him. 
something. Yeah, exactly. Because he he already asked for his help. He got it. Mm-hmm. And yet, what the hell did Dean do but just bury the ring and not even return it? Rude. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty selfish of you, Dean. Pretty much. Um, <laughs> so Dean tells Death that Death may be the only person who can jailbreak Lucifer's cage. Um, and Death knows all about what's going on. Um, he knows that Sam's soul is stuck inside and, um, you know, but it's, it's interesting because Dean says like, well, it's Sam's soul and Adam is stuck in the cage. So he's bringing up Adam as well. I thought that was Um, really weird. Yeah. Which, you know. Don't we not care about him anymore? (laughs) (laughs) Well, in this next moment, we see that truly we don't care about him. Because Dean says, I'm, I'm sorry, Death says to pick one, only either Sam Soul or Adam. Um, he usually, he doesn't usually bring people back. And so he definitely won't be able to do the two. Like that's way too much of an ask for him. And Dean immediately, like without a thought, asks about Sam Soul. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, fine. Um, not, yeah, not even and- fine. Yeah, he was just like. <laughs> Sam, duh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about Sam's soul, please. Yeah. Um and, and and Death does kind of look a little a little surprised um uh, for a second about that. But uh yeah, Dean asks, like, can Death repair Sam's soul when he yanks it out of hell? And Death says he can't, but he can put it behind a wall to repress like the memories of what Sam did without his soul um, just, you know, and just kind of like basically tape it up and and make it a little bit better. Um, But it doesn't last forever. That's the only catch. That's kind of a big catch. I mean, my only hesitation throughout a lot of this episode, you know, like I was saying, is that I felt like death was doing him a lot of favors and there had to be more of a catch to it. Um, and there kind of was like once he gets into this deal that they make and, um, I don't know, like he doesn't (laughs) say how long we can expect to have normal Sam or like what, what to really expect. Right. Yeah. Um, he doesn't really know how long it'll last. Um, he just says that because later on he says like it's 75 even like that it will work it's like 75 percent chance it'll mm-hmm. work so it's just so up yeah. in the air um and the way dean describes it he's just like okay sam with no soul or sam with some drywall and <laughs> dean's like okay yeah do it fine I, I i don't care i don't want sam with no soul any anything is better than that essentially um which is interesting which it is interesting it, he's just so adamant that it's just not going to work out and i don't know maybe it's kind of a little bit of self what what's the term like self premonition oh like self fulfilling prophecy kind of thing that sort of thing yes because I don't know. Maybe he's he forced Sam to like do all of this. I don't know. That's kind of like like victim blaming, perhaps or not victim blaming, but maybe Maybe, putting a little bit too much on Sam. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think it's um, kind of overstepping from Dean at this point, anyway, because. You know, even though Sam doesn't have a soul, does that mean that he doesn't have a right to choose for himself? Exactly. Yeah. I I don't know about that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest issue that I have with Dean. You know, later on, Sam kind of makes that... um, that argument and it's essentially like a my body my choice right kind of argument <laughs> which, which I, I can't get, argue against yeah I, I get behind that yeah <laughs> so 
I don't know. Uh, Dean, Dean's a little too hasty to just, you know, totally ignore all of that. And um, yeah, like just right do in his in face. His Sam is trust. literally telling him, like, don't do this, please. And he's doing it. It's like, what? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> yep. Well, Death says that he can do it if Dean can fetch Death's ring. But he wants him to put it on and be him for a day. Um, which is an interesting uh, little deal that he's making here. Yeah. And we have no he idea says, what's coming. Like, what's it like to be death for a day? Yeah. No, not at all. Um, and he says that if he takes it off before 24 hours, then no Sam soul. Um, Dean asks why, and Death is about to tell him when he's woken up and surprised to hear from Dr. Robert that he's been dead for actually seven minutes. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So I guess I imagine that Death was about to tell him what he ends up telling him at the end, that he wants Dean to learn a lesson about playing around with life and death, because Dean does do that quite a bit. I don't know. I guess that's a a good point. That could totally be it. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought back to that moment to you know think mm-hmm. about like what he really meant. But uh, I would buy that. It did seem it seemed like it was going to be something really important. <laughs> You're like, yeah. damn it, what? Yeah. what? <laughs> Why? Yeah, Dean was really frustrated that he was brought back to life. I would be too. Um, so Dean reports back to Sam and Bobby. Sam is still worried about his head exploding once he gets his soul back. And Dean doesn't want to let go of control over this choice. So Bobby asks what Dean has to do in return because he doesn't believe that death is actually going to be helping him out um, just willy-nilly. And Dean explains he has to be death for the day. Sam says he's going to go outside to clear his mind. And outside in the junkyard, Sam comes upon a hole in the ground. And he's apparently looking for the ring. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Dean appears right behind him with Bobby. And he's holding up Death's ring. Which, sneaky little Sam. He was already going for it. Yeah, so, okay, another quick question. If he was already... um. You know, at that point, he had decided he didn't want his soul. He was trying to, like, intervene and keep mm-hmm. keep that from happening. So why didn't he bring that up again and say no and, like, argue with him about it? Right, yeah. Like, why I did think... he let Dean go through with, with his mm-hmm. deal and just try something else on the side? Like, did he think maybe he couldn't convince Dean? Yeah. I I feel like he just kind of gave up with arguing with Dean, right? I mean, he had been yeah, doing that so. this entire time and Dean just was not wanting to listen. Yeah. Um So he just really but I don't know. I don't know his his idea behind like being sneaky and maybe like trying to keep the soul out is just I don't know. There's a lot there because it's not really sneaky after all if he has to like cut Bobby and kill Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. Not even cut. Um, Yeah. He looked like he was going for the kill. Well, I think so. I didn't understand this word when he said it, but after they talked about what was needed, he said, um, uh, fuck, what's his name? Balthazar? Mm-hmm. Uh, told Sam that he would have to do, like, patricide? Right. So, like, kill your dad. Yeah. And then, well, and so, yeah, and then later on, um... Well, quote-unquote well, right dad. After, <laughs> right. And right after, though, he is like, oh, to be clear, you need the blood of 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 your dad or your father. And so that's why I was like, oh, okay, maybe maybe it's like oh, I see it's exaggerating a little bit and they just need blood. I think but what no, he was it's... saying was like 
you, to be clear, like you need the blood of your father, but it doesn't have to be your your actual blood dad. So that's the part right. I think he was uh, clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um so fucked ugh. up. Don't kill Bobby. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's <sighs> really messed up. Yeah. Um anyway, getting ahead of it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's a lot. There's a lot here. Um So yeah, I mean, it seems like Dean um this is, you know, Dean doesn't want to uh, let go of control. Sam's trying to get out of it. Um, and Sam says that, I'm sorry. So Sam first asks Dean, like, what if Dean's wrong? And Dean's like, well, what if you're wrong? And so they're just, again, they're just not coming to an understanding. And so Sam says, fine, he'll trust Dean's decision. And Dean walks off, but whispers to Bobby, like, watch Sam as he passes and Bobby's like, all right, I got this because he's looking very suspiciously at Sam this entire episode. Um, so Sam and Bobby walk back inside their home. Um, Dean apparently has already taken off, um, or walked over to another area, um, on the property. And Sam asks if this is the part where Bobby knocks him out and locks him inside the panic room. And he kind of asks this jokingly, but Bobby answers very seriously, like, do I have to? And Sam just kind of snorts and says, no. So Dean, meanwhile, puts on Death's um, ring. And all of a sudden, he appears in another city. Um, it's a bustling city. There's a lot going on. And Tessa is behind him. And she's mad because Dean has a long history of throwing a wrench in everything. And she just thinks, okay, this is another thing that you're going to fuck up, essentially. Um, and he, she explains to him that if he touches the individuals who are set to die... Then that's when they die. She tells him not to mess up, though, since she's not his babysitter. But she's just basically there to show him the ropes. Such foreshadowing. As soon as she said that, I was like, well, he's going to mess it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we know. <laughs> we know he's going to. He knows best, right? And yeah. he's, he's going to do something. Um. So cut to Sam in a warehouse doing a ritual with a sigil and some herbs. He lights a match and throws it in a cup and Balthazar appears. Um, and of course, we haven't seen Balthazar since uh, a, way earlier in the season. Um, mm -hmm. Where where they visit him the in that very, empty mansion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that uh, playing that funky music. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the very last thing that we saw of him, and we might have seen a little bit of this in the recap, is Sam, like, basically telling him, or maybe it was Cass, telling him, like, if we ever see you again, we're gonna fucking kill you, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, it didn't end very well. <laughs> Not on great terms. Nope. And Sam, though, um, is asking for help. He says that Sam, it, and of course, Balthazar brings up the fact that Sam actually threatened specifically to fry his wings crispy. So that's what was said. Um, and Sam asks Balthazar if there's a spell to be able to keep his soul out permanently. And Balthazar says that he'd actually love to be, um, or to have Sam in his debt. And he kind of hates Dean. So... You know, he's willing to forgive and forget um, the wrongs done uh, to him by Sam in order to help. He tells Sam that he should be able to find all the ingredients, but there is one that is a little bit tricky. <clears throat> so apparently, Sam needs to scar his vessel, um, which basically means that he needs to pollute it and make it uninhabitable. And, um, and this is where he says you know that it's through patricide um and that it doesn't need to be the blood 
or I'm sorry, it doesn't need to be his father by blood. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Let me get a little bit of. Um... Absolutely not. You need to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> no water for you. Um, yeah, that was very interesting. And I wonder what that whole spell, uh, you know, entailed, like how you would use your father's blood or is it just in killing your dad that that does it? I don't know. Mm. That's a good point. It made it seem as if it was just, um, like another component of a spell, right? Kind of, of <clears throat> yeah, like throwing things in with each other. Mm-hmm. But maybe it is kind of like a Horcrux situation, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And I don't actually totally know how to make the Horcrux either. Like, do you? We uh, is that answered except by on the internet since the books came out? <laughs> I actually don't think that it was ever answered because i read something somewhere about how jk rowling um said that she had written out how to create a horcrux but she never wanted it published because it was so dark essentially yeah so i have no idea what it could be that's some fucked up shit Yeah, but obviously not anything good. So Tessa and Dean walk down a busy street, and Tessa tells Dean that when people die, they may have lots of questions. Dean asks what he's supposed to tell them, and Tessa says to make it up. It comes with a gig. Um, In a convenience store, a robber points a gun at the clerk and his son, telling him to empty the cash register. And now Dean and Tessa are standing there, um watching dean gets very nervous especially when the robber threatens the little kid and asks who's gonna die and tessa tells him to let it play out but then we see the clerk pull out a hidden gun from the register and shoot the robber the robber falls to the ground and starts writhing in pain and tessa tells dean to go ahead and touch him um you know in order to end his life but dean says to give him an Give him a minute because he wants the robber to suffer, to continue suffering, essentially. Yeah. Um, So that's super dark. Yes. (laughs) Like, he's literally like, "Uh, so he's in a lot of pain, right? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, okay, this can wait. It's like, right. Whoa. Okay. Uh, it is definitely a moment of like dean playing god yeah and i wondered if he took it real personally because it was a man and his son Mm. i don't know right and he feels like you know that connection with ben now yeah i definitely himself in that situation maybe i yeah i think it was a lot of a lot to do with the fact that his son um was there the clerk's son was there and robert was like do it or i'll shoot your kid and and that sort of thing yeah he was basically like this um this guy is 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 terrible you know right um okay my dad just did confirm that he took my charger so (laughs) Oh my god. Well, your charger's taking a little vacay to California. <laughs> it sure did. Um wow. <laughs> That's okay. So funny. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, not. But uh I feel your pain. Man. <laughs> okay, we'll figure it out. Well, so Tessa tells Dean, um, you know, uh, obviously just had just instructed him, just touch him and you'll, you know, kill him. He does so and the man dies immediately and his ghost slash like soul appears behind them. And he just asks why. And Dean says, because he's a dick. Like, that's why he died, essentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. All right. He's like really mean to this dude after I know. he's dead. I know. Who knows what this guy's going through? I mean, really. I know. I was like, oh my God, are we going to find out that he has like a wife at home who's dying of cancer and he's like desperate or something? Oh, like, you know? Right? Yeah. Know. Like he needs the money. Yeah. But no, I guess he was just a dick, I guess. <laughs> um. Next, we go outside in some park. Dean and Tessa come upon a man who is like stuffing his face with pizza. Dean calls it as a heart attack. And sure enough, the guy seizes right after. Um, and Dean immediately with this man does touch him and, and, and kills him immediately. And the soul of the guy asks, but what does it all mean? And Dean hesitates. And then he looks really smug with himself and says, everything is just dust in the wind. And the man goes, that's it? A Kansas song? <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, he's just totally a, pissed. A little disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Imagine. Um, oh, God. It would be even worse if it was like, wait a second. A Miley Cyrus song? Oh, like, yeah. that's it? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Um, that's all life is. <laughs> and, of course, this is... Um, I mean, I think this is two different references playing with each other. One in that, um, you know, Kansas obviously is a big part of Supernatural in that they do um, carry on My Wayward Son. But also, Everything is Dust in the Wind um, is what uh, either Bill or Ted say to Socrates as like they're when they're philosophizing <laughs> in uh, <laughs> Excellent Adventure. Nice. Um, so it's a it's a cute little reference there. So Tessa pulls this man away from Dean, explaining that he's new, and Dean doesn't look very smug with himself anymore. Um, okay, so we see Bobby coming home to Sam, and he pours a drink for the both of them. And just again, the two of them are just looking at each other very suspiciously, like neither of them trust each other. Um and we later see that Bobby and Sam are playing cards to just kill the time. Um, so then we cut back to Dean and Tessa, who are going to the hospital where Dean's next client is a young girl of the age of 12. Um, apparently, she has a severe heart condition. And he walks away very upset and tells Tessa that he's not taking her. He's death for the day, so he gets to say that she lives. And Tessa explains that it's destiny. It's it's the natural order of things. It's how it's supposed to work. But Dean shuts down that argument. And he says specifically, um, and I wrote this down, I've spent my whole life fighting that crap. There's no such thing as destiny, just like there was no apocalypse. Um, but Tessa says that Dean doesn't even believe what he's saying because of all the situations where Dean found himself screwed after messing with life and death. So interesting. We had that conversation a lot because it came up a lot in previous seasons, this idea of fate and destiny mm -hmm. and whether or not it's real. Um, and they have definitely uh, operated as though it's not. And they can always take their fate into their own hands. Um, but then this brings that question back up. I don't know that we've thought about that or that it's been brought up in the show in a while. And um, yeah, so it totally brings it back and makes you wonder all over again if you really do have a choice or if there is such a thing as destiny. Yeah, and... I'm trying to think. I, you know, we've only, especially in the beginning, we've seen where they're them intervening with things and um, saving all of these lives has made has actually made the world a better place in a lot of ways. Um, but we haven't yet really seen where th you know them doing something has has had a bad rift. In the world. I mean, maybe we've seen a little bit of that, like, um, 
uh, for example, when Dean brought back Sam, like in season two. Yeah. Like I think some of the deals and stuff that they've made in the past with creatures and demons were not uh, totally advisable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the bigger actions and how things have ended up generally. Right. All of those domino effects. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, and, and this is this is a bigger example that we get of it um in this next scene because yeah, Dean's just like, no, I'm not gonna do it. Um, and we jump to the doctor telling the dad that her heart has completely healed. It's a miracle and she's gonna be okay. Um, and the dad and the daughter take off, kind of weighing down the, the hospital hallway. Um But Dean and Tessa turn their attention to a nurse who's on the phone and she says that the surgery was canceled. She was supposed to be in that in that room with the girl. And Tessa tells Dean that their work isn't done there and they follow after her. So meanwhile, we actually go back to Bobby and Sam as they continue to play cards when Sam asks for another beer. Bobby gets up to grab it from the fridge, but Sam sneaks up behind Bobby. Too bad, though, because Bobby is already on Sam's shit and was anticipating it. He spins around, knocks Sam out and to the ground, and Bobby goes around the kitchen island and grabs some rope from a nearby table, but when he turns around, Sam has disappeared. It's like... (laughs) How did he do that? Yeah, it's like Michael Myers level, like (laughs) horror movie shit right here. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. So he looks around kind of nervous and goes through the house to find Sam. And he locks the door um, because, you know, trying to like kind of corner Sam and runs into a, a closet, closing the door behind him. And the doorknob rattles, but it doesn't open. And then all of a sudden, um, like an freaking axe starts breaking through the closet door. I actually screamed a little bit. (laughs) I was like, "Ah!" (laughs) it's insane. It's like it's like Bobby's living in a horror movie. Yeah. All of a sudden, and Sam is chopping through this door with um with this axe, and he opens it enough where you know Bobby can now see Sam. And Bobby says, don't say here's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, and he, Sam says, he's sorry, but he has to do this. And he shouldn't have cornered himself. And Bobby says, he hasn't cornered himself. And pulls a lever inside the closet. And all of a sudden, um, the floor underneath Sam just opens up. And Sam falls down into the basement smart so bobby's got tricks bobby has yeah he's really home alone this house oh fuck yeah (laughs) full of full of booby traps oh yeah um and sam gets up in the basement his leg is torn up a little bit um but that doesn't stop him he goes around trying to find an opening runs up uh to the main basement door and tries to break through it um but it is reinforced with steel similar to how the panic room was reinforced sam explains to bobby that he has to do it to make sure not to allow dean to put his soul back inside him who knows if that wall will actually hold and, and maybe he'll just be completely screwed um and he says really interestingly Dean doesn't actually care about him. He only cares about his little brother burning in hell. Which I think he's totally right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost like uh Dean is like uh holding on to like a memory of Sam in a way. Yeah. Um I don't know. It's it's just it's very strange. And it's also another instance, though, where uh, Sam is explaining or referring to himself as like a different person altogether. Right. You know. So, yeah, that's that's a hard pill to swallow. But I think that explains a lot, you know, 
um, about why mm-hmm. he doesn't care about what this Sam wants, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, still, still problematic on on some level for me that he doesn't that he doesn't care what the Sam wants and uh, like goes against that. Um, yeah, totally. But I guess it kind of explains maybe uh, like what's motivating him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it it completely does. Um, and of course, Sam, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways this may act, this whole storyline with like Sam may act as a, as a sort of metaphor for people changing and Dean just not really being able to grasp that and, and come to terms with it. Mm. So I guess if we see it in that way and not with this idea of like, Oh wait, Sam is actually really terrible. This new Sam. Mm -hmm. Um, It is kind of like, well, I mean, Sam, I mean, excuse me, Dean just needs to let go and just accept that the Sam he knew is gone. Um, if Sam has changed, but I don't know. That's, that's also kind of, again, that's a a hard pill to swallow. Like you said, because that that's who he knows. That's who he loves. And Mm -hmm. all of that is gone. And that's who we know too. Um, I'm still very much getting used to this new Sam, but I think I could, you know, that's kind of the weird thing is that even though he's different and he's not the Sam we know and love, I I could deal with that um, if it meant yeah. that he might die or be a vegetable or whatever, uh, you know, by putting in his abused soul. Right. Right. Yeah. So, like, wouldn't that be preferable? Right. <laughs> I don't know. I guess not to Dean, but I, I'm not not totally sure why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a little strange. Um, so Bobby says he knows it's scary, but what's scarier is the way that Sam is acting. So maybe that's why. <laughs> um, yeah, certainly like it's true. Uh, mm-hmm. How far he can go. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, it just makes me think like maybe it is Dean just again having this like monster phobia of Sam, like not mm. wanting Sam to become a monster, which was a big thing of season two. Yeah. Um, of season five. And again, it's happening again with Sam, where he's just again with Sam and the monsters. <laughs> yeah, he's just really he's we're always having to worry about sam Mm -hmm. not turning into a complete um you know demon right (laughs) or devil actually (laughs) the literal devil right so um okay so bobby says all that and sam doesn't answer this time and bobby opens the basement door and he's like god damn it and sam is gone um, Bobby goes down to find him and it's only when he peers inside the panic room that he sees that Sam has used a ladder in order to climb up and out through the lone ventil- ventilation point in the room. It's fucking crazy. And he, yeah, very, um, very stealthy. And Bobby also notices some blood on the handle of the panic room. So, you know, because Sam is, is bleeding from his leg. So back at the hospital, a flurry of staff are running around and they bring in the nurse that we saw from earlier. Tessa explains that by Dean letting the little girl live, the nurse staff and and the doctor went home early because they didn't have to have surgery. And she got into an accident that she otherwise wouldn't have been able to get into. Um, So he touches this girl and she dies and her spirit asks why and tessa without you know really playing it um Mm. uh what's the term uh just uh, hedging 
She's not really hedging. Is that what you would say? She's just being straight up. Uh But she tells this girl, like, well, it's because Dean, this guy, screwed up. It's his (laughs) fault. Um, And then she says, yeah, you were supposed to live many decades and have children and grandchildren. Fuck. (sighs) But not And... No, not anymore. And Dean apologizes and Tessa takes her away. So, um, he does look really upset here. I did want to just say that I, um, was appropriately sad for all of these scenes. I felt like they were written, directed, and shot really well and acted well, um, earlier when Dean goes into the hospital and sees the little girl when she's in really bad shape with her dad and they're looking at pictures, like I almost started crying. Mm -hmm. And then this, this scene, you know what you'll talk about next. I actually like really did kind of start crying and I was like, Oh my God, this is really (laughs) heavy and they're portraying it well. Um, And so you get a real sense of, what Dean is dealing with here. And uh, he's, you know, yes. we know he's become a little bit of a softie, I think, <laughs> in his um, yeah. older years, if you can call them older. But, um, yeah. Yeah, he definitely, um, definitely more than Sam, at least. But, um, <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with you, though, that there were, there was some really great directing with these scenes. Um, they, they, Especially, yeah, with with them looking at the pictures. I was just kind of like, you're really digging the knife into our hearts mm-hmm. with that little girl. And like, oh, we can go on vacation to Disneyland or whatever they were planning. And yeah. Like, and then Dean asks Tessa, too. He was like, does this guy have any other family? And she's like, no, not really. So this man's about to lose his daughter, who's pretty much all he has. Right. Ugh. <laughs> yeah horrible it's terrible it is well so we get a little bit of a break from the sadness where we see bobby outside in his junkyard looking for sam he spots blood on the door handle to his shed and opens it up bracing himself for sam to be inside um but sam's got the best of him he totally tricked him, and he's actually behind Bobby, and he knocks him out cold. Damn it. Mm-hmm. That's Sam. Clever girl. <laughs> um, so Tessa takes Dean to the little girl and explains that he needs to kill her in order to stop any others from dying. Um, and this is a scene where the little girl is planning the vacation trip with her dad. They're going through these old pictures. Um, she is looking at a picture of her mom. And so we can kind of guess that maybe her mom is dead and and that's why um, the dad is going to be alone. Mm -hmm. And Dean, um, before he can do that, he looks out the window and spots the nurse's husband getting behind the wheel, looking extremely drunk. Um, That's the part that really got me is when they brought the husband in. Oh, Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I did skip over that. No, it's okay. Because it was really short, but that was – it was just heartbreaking. Yes. Um, yeah, because he was, of course, like crying and, and just hysterical. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he went drinking. Mm-hmm. Yep. Apparently uh, – probably not a great idea to have a bar across the street from the hospital. Yeah, like who's that? Who was that? god that there's a bar across the street from Grey's anatomy as well (laughs) um actually that they go to a lot um so dean follows after him and we see the man driving just crazy down the road dean in the passenger seat dean's yelling at him to stop but of course he can't hear him so this is a moment where dean says fuck it and he decides to take off his ring and he appears like Frodo, like oh, in yeah. the passenger seat. Toad's Lord of the Rings style. <sighs> yes. And the man is able to see him all of a sudden, of course, is freaked out. Um, and that startles him. 
enough into avoiding a passing bus, but the man still crashes into a light pole. Mm -hmm. So um, we see Dean get out of the wreck. He's totally fine. Um, the man is fine also. And he starts yelling in the middle of the street for Tessa. But then he remembers he can't, he can't see her without the ring. And he so he puts it back on. Tessa says that she's sorry for his brother. And the two are suddenly back in the hospital um, soon after. For Dean to willingly now finish the order of business by killing the little girl. So we see now that the father is sleeping in a chair right next to her. And he wakes up after Dean touches the girl and she begins to flatline. And she appears be beside Dean and Tessa and asks why. And Dean says he doesn't have an explanation, just that it's part of the natural order of things. And she's like, well, the natural order of things is stupid. And it's like, well, yeah, it is. Agreed. Sorry, yeah, honey. totally. I know. It's terrible. Um... So back in Bobby's shed, though, Bobby is now tied up and Sam is getting ready to cut Bobby with a huge hunter knife. God damn. Sam apologizes and he's about to, like, I think slit Bobby's throat. That's my um, guess as well. Mm -hmm. When Dean appears behind him and knocks Sam out. <laughs> so, that was really great. He was like, hey punch <laughs> yeah almost as if like okay i knew this shit was gonna happen yeah <laughs> got back just in time um so next we see that they've thrown sam into the panic room but when dean goes upstairs death is waiting for him and he's eating a bacon dog from la um from a little stand from la he said so, of course, this continues the fact that Death really loves his cheap food because he was eating pizza before, right? Mm -hmm. In Chicago. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, he tells Dean to sit and Dean admits that he messed up and that he really sucked at being Death. Um, he totally screwed up the natural order, of course. Death asks if Dean could go back and simply kill the girl. Would he? And Dean says that knowing what he does now, he would. Death is kind of surprised to hear that. And he says that Dean learned a very valuable lesson. So I actually copied down exactly what he said because I, I feel like it was really interesting. Um, he told Dean, today you got a hard look behind the curtain. Wrecking the natural order is not quite such fun when you have to mop up the mess, is it? This is hard for you, Dean. You throw away your life because you've come to assume that it'll bounce right back into your lap. But the human soul is not a rubber ball. It's vulnerable, vulnerable and permanent, but stronger than you know and more valuable than you can imagine. So I think you've learned something today. Thank you for repeating that for me because I was kind of still wondering what exactly the lesson was. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm trying to apply that to, to how Dean operates and, um, you know, just how they generally act. Um, they take a lot of risks and have been to hell and back <laughs> multiple times. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. Is, and like, Dean ahead. is always calling on Cass, right? Or both of them. Mm -hmm. To, like, help them out, that sort of thing. Right. So is is death basically just telling him, I don't know, be careful um, or don't be so hasty? Um, or don't, I don't know, take other lives so quickly? Yeah. You know, like, I guess question. I'm trying to like, boil it down to, like, what the... What exactly is the issue? What do you take from this? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because I, I think... I thought either two things. I agree with you that it's not very clear. Um, But I, I think... Because he also continues 
he keeps on telling Dean, like, for example, Dean rolls his eyes at him. And he says, like, how dare you roll your eyes at me? Like, you need to show me more respect. And so even even little things like that, like, Dean has completely lost respect for the natural order of things mm-hmm. and for the way things are supposed to work. He and and maybe that's just as because um those things <laughs> didn't deserve to be respected mm-hmm. anyway. Like he never showed respect to to the angels and to God <clears throat> and any of these things that he was being constantly asked to follow. Mm-hmm. Um and obviously for good reason, but it just seems like death is telling him like, well, you've gone a little bit too far now. You're playing with fire and you don't really even know the consequences of doing that. Right. Yeah. He's just, you know, he's just a human just fucking around with shit that he's not supposed to fuck around with. Yeah. And he doesn't, right. Like you said, he doesn't understand the consequences of that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. Um, but I am curious to know, like, what it will foreshadow, what it is foreshadowing, because it feels like foreshadowing for the rest of the season. Right. Yeah. Like, if this is a lesson that he had to learn, why did he have to learn it? Like, there's going to, it's mm-hmm. going to be tested, I think. Um, And then I was just reading part of the synopsis, like, what, uh, else was said here but i'm sure you'll get to this other thing too that's very interesting that i wanted to talk Mm -hmm. about okay well um dean says that death knew he wouldn't last a day and that it was rigged but death isn't happy with how disrespectful again he speaks to him in that um death gets up to leave and says that he's gonna go down to hell to get sam's soul which dean is like completely surprised about he's like oh i thought i had lost dean uh and death says he's doing it because dean is digging at something and he wants dean to actually keep on digging um and he doesn't say much more beyond uh, what he does say is it's all it's about the souls that's what he says Mm -hmm. so whatever that means yeah so that's that's what I was talking about is like that I wanted to talk about what what is going on there. Um and I feel like that mm-hmm. could go a bunch of different directions. Like we have kind of been talking about souls more recently and how valuable they are. Uh everybody talk everybody talks about how um unimaginably valuable they are. And I don't know if he needs to keep digging to, like, find out. I don't know. Like, what is it that we're finding out about the souls? But I like it. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought that was a cool tip. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, he's just like, you'll understand when you need to. Um, but, yeah, it's just a little bit. It is very cryptic. Um, what does it mean? Because Dean hasn't really been digging. If anything, it's like Samuel who's been digging Mm. for all these alphas and and, and all of that. Yeah, I was kind of trying to – like I was thinking about that and seeing if there was any kind of connection. Maybe mm. that I just haven't thought of yet. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Purgatory. (laughs) Yeah, does that have to do with purgatory? <laughs> Can I get a P? <laughs> um, oh an A? <laughs> Please? Um, so Dean asks again if the wall thing will work. And Death says he's 75% sure. So we cut to, um, you know, like Death has kind of like disappeared Dean runs down to the basement and tells Bobby to quickly open the panic room door. And we see Sam tied to the bed, screaming at death, who opens his medical bag and a bright light shines out. Death tells Sam that he's going to put up a wall 
and that it'll be really itchy, but not to scratch the wall because he's he's not going to like what happens if he breaks it. That doesn't sound fun. None of this sounds fun. No, it sounds like a lot of warning is um uh-huh. is happening right now. Um, a lot of side effects with this treatment. <laughs> So, <laughs> which quick side note uh i uh-huh. watched a lot of cable tv recently and we don't have cable and i saw so many fucking commercials for medications and my favorite ones were the ones that said do not take if you're allergic to this medication like, how the fuck are you supposed to know if you're allergic to it unless you take it yeah no i i because I'm, I have an allergy to a medication, and of course, I didn't know until like my throat was closing and that sort of thing. And well, there you yeah. go. Yeah. He's, but yeah, they also include uh, all these horrible side effects. It's like you know, bleeding out of your ass and stuff like that. It's like, well, why? Why would I want this? Why would I even risk this? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, <laughs> the sound to share. Well. That's exactly what Sam's point was. Essentially, he doesn't want to bleed out of his ass. Um, <laughs> I don't want those side effects. He might be allergic. <laughs> so, um, Death reaches inside the bag and grabs the soul out. And it's just, we don't see like what it looks like. It's just this bright, white, shining light. And Sam is like begging Dean not to let it happen. Like, just begging and begging he doesn't know what's going to happen he he's he's scared really um and death places it back inside sam and sam screams out like totally in pain and then that's how this episode ends yeah um I don't know, a little hard to watch because of what we were talking about earlier. Like it was obviously against Sam's wishes. And is he really like who's to decide that he can't make that decision for himself? Yeah. Dean is kind of treating Sam as if he's a completely illogical being, Mm -hmm. Um, an irrational being. But it, I don't know. If anything, he's more rational. Um, maybe, har- you know, of course, harshingly so. But there is no emotion in within Sam to, like, lead him any, any other way. Mm-hmm. It's just he's only thinking with his head. And whereas Dean is only thinking with his emotions. Right. I feel. Because, like, um, I don't know. Is that good enough, Dean? Like, is is that the reason Sam isn't allowed to make his own choices because he doesn't have any feelings? Like, he, that's kind of what he's been arguing this whole time. And in some cases, I understand. Like, he kind of uh, needs to take himself out of the equation because he can't make, um, like, good decisions for other people. Sam can't, mm-hmm. you know? Like, he maybe would put somebody in danger or kill them just because he thinks it's more logical. Um. But when it comes to himself, I think that's kind of where I'm struggling. Yeah. Because I don't know that. I don't know. I just don't know that it makes sense either. You know, like even even though you want Sam back and you want to be able to like save him and, you know, put him back the way he was. Yeah. Is like this really the way. Yeah. And it's funny because Dean is, uh, I mean, they could definitely just take their time, I would think, and and try to figure out a better way. But Dean is acting as if there's like some sort of time bomb that's about to go off with Sam and there isn't, you know? Mm -hmm. If anything, he's putting a time bomb into Mm -hmm. Sam. Yeah, because we don't know how long that's going to last. Yeah. This in between fix. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I guess but, we'll see. But we were left on a cliffhanger. So, as soon as we're done, I'm going to go watch the beginning of the next episode. <laughs> right. Because Sam <laughs> has his soul back. Um, 
or we're we're about to see and mm-hmm. we're about to see how that works and mm-hmm. if it's gonna work out yeah if it um, works <laughs> mm-hmm. um so well i think great episode i agree with you i really like this episode quite a bit um i think it, I, I actually feel like it's one of the stronger episodes of season six and um it was just a lot of fun to have death back to learn a little bit more about what how death works um i did have kind of a question about you know because i assume like death can't be everywhere all at once or maybe he can but it because it just seemed like Dean and Tessa were just working one town and it's like, well, there's got to be a lot of other stuff going on, you know? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. I wonder about that too. Like maybe we're just, um, I don't know, for the simple, for the simplification of this exercise and the episode, like he's sort of functioning one by one like that. Um. Right. I also was wondering, as uh, as you were talking earlier, you know, we had that episode, uh, Hammer of the Gods, with all of the other gods and the other religions represented. Is death representing death in all religions or only in Christianity? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question because he came about as a four, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which is, you know, a a a christian thing Mm -hmm. um so i guess there are there do we assume that there are other uh like representations of death you know that are like in in the form of a person or something for the other religions oh yeah or how do how do they that's really interesting i don't know exactly I would I would love to see that. I mean, or to think about that. I I could maybe just assume that he, maybe he does just do the whole world. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I think he does. I think he does because I read in the wiki and I didn't bring this up in the episode because it was a really small reference. Mm-hmm. But I read in the wiki that um I think Tessa makes a reference to having just come from was it darfur oh and so it's it's yeah so there's a war there's an ongoing ongoing war happening in darfur and so it's supposed to be just a reference to her working there so it's it's a well and that doesn't really necessarily specifically answer our questions about like um, because I'm thinking of it it's just being a foreign country, but I I don't think that they're a Christian state. And so that's that's kind right. of my point. Yeah. Um it's less likely. Yeah, I wonder. Right. But also my question is with death, so the Reapers are there to really like do the job, right? I mean, I think that's how maybe they spread out so much. But is death just like also doing the the field work or <laughs> because he's at the top, is he like more in a and he's he you know, he's like more in a manage managerial level or directorial <laughs> level. Is he more doing like the office job or maybe just doing um like the big deaths? whatever those might be, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Like where, where, how does the hierarchy work here? What does your actual day right. job look like? Exactly. Um, um, it would have been funny if like Dean would have just put on the ring and he's just like pushing paper <laughs> or like signing off on deaths this or sucks. something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this isn't what I was expecting at all. <laughs> You're just sitting in front of a computer clicking. <laughs> um, yeah that'd be funny I'm I'm looking at the ranking and I'm going back and forth a little bit I don't know 
if you have any thoughts yet. Um, uh, let me see what our highest right now from season six is actually weekend at Bobby's. That's right now at number 10. Um, and weekend at Bobby's was the one where that was, that was all the way more towards the beginning episode four of season six. Um, when they try to get Bobby's soul back from the Crowley. That was a really good episode. That was a really good episode. Um, this one I was kind of looking. Oh. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so real crazy talk. I was looking anywhere from kind of like 15 to 20. Um, but also potentially like 20 to 25. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, yeah, reading, reading this one, I was like, oh yeah, that was, Weekend at Bobby's was a really, really good one. I don't, I don't believe it should be that high. And I, I believe some of the ones underneath or a lot of the ones underneath are, are much better Mm. as well. Interesting. Um, but you know, I think. I don't think you're too crazy. I kind of actually like the spot right underneath number 20. So number 20 is Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, where we learn a little bit more about Bobby um, and Jody Miller, right? So um, the zombies are coming back into town. Oh, gotcha. And then right underneath that is You Can't Handle the Truth which was an episode in season six where um, Sam and Dean are investigating Veritas and, you know, everyone has like that truth serum, basically Mm. all of that's been summoned and things really come to a head with Sam and Dean. But I, I really like this one better than that. I think I do too. I just kind of had it all. Mm-hmm. Um, I I kind of like that spot. Yeah, I think that fits because I think the ones above it are are really great episodes as well that do a little maybe do a little bit more for us. But I yeah, they're they're yeah, kind of th- heavy hitters as far as the plot goes. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was too. Yeah, but- I think that works. It's up there. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. I'm with you. All right. Well, that means that appointment on Samara. Wait. No. Appointment in Samara. (laughs) Is going in as new number 21. (laughs) And this one's going in the trunk. All right. Cool, man. Yeah, finally. Um, What's your computer uh, at? It's at 35%. Woo! I know, man. We did it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, an update. My dad has decided instead of <laughs> just shipping it to me, he's bought me a whole new charger. <laughs> and it'll be here on Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Maybe he was like, I Thank need you, a Dad. Charger. <laughs> just kidding uh well so um yeah you shouldn't expect us to disappear or anything like that because I can't yeah like new charger in two days we're good um we did get one son of a bitch which i forgot to mention earlier in the episode um but it was just one of those moments where dean is like freaking the fuck out and he's like oh son of a bitch um so we did get one of those. Not a lot of crying happening this season, guys. This is not true. No emotions this season, right? We got Robo Sam. Yeah, it's Sam's fault. We got, it is Sam's fault. He's our he's our um main crier. But hey, he's got his soul back. <laughs> 
so, <laughs> so let's see if that changes anticipate some more tears yeah perhaps <laughs> um but yeah other than that the next episode we're going to be talking about is uh episode 12 like a virgin so i don't remember what this episode's about so we'll see what that's what's happening there okay um but otherwise you guys can find us on social media on twitter facebook and instagram at highway to hell podcast um also please visit our website um if you ever want to look at things like our map um that that we haven't updated for quite some time no but i have maybe one day well um <laughs> so sorry so maybe don't look at it you can look at our ranking of all the look, episodes if you go that... on our website don't look at the map just don't look at anything but go on our website at www.highwaydale and you can only look at four pages <laughs> right um also we have some shirts that can be found through our website um they're really cute and I, I hope you guys check them out yeah and i think you can actually get the print like printed on like cups or stickers and, and that sort of thing so oh, cups. check that out so great i know um it's hey it's getting colder it's put some hot uh, chocolate in that mug it's hot cocoa season and you can have <laughs> you know what your hot means. cocoa in the highway to hell podcast mug um <laughs> And yeah, just rate us and review us on iTunes or anywhere that you listen to us. So we really appreciate it. And we really appreciate you guys listening to us. Um, yes. And I think that's about it. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see you on the highway to hell. Bye. Bye.